All across the country, the battle over gun control has been heating up ever since the Sandy Hook school shootings up in uh, Connecticut. All right, and gun control measures are being proposed on both the state and national levels, angering many gun owners. Just yesterday, Senator uh, Dianne Feinstein introduced a bill, mm -hmm. and uh, it's got a lot of people up in arms. Right. In fact, uh, Pinal County Sheriff Paul Babu has written this letter that you're looking at now to President Obama. He says the president's push for gun control is an assault on the rights of American citizens. And he says he will not follow any gun law that's created by an executive order from the president that contradicts the Constitution of the United States. He says any such law would actually be unlawful and neither he nor his department will follow it. Sheriff Paul Babu joins us live this morning in studio. Thanks for coming on with us. Good morning. That sounds pretty aggressive, right? It does. <laughs> well, we've got the letter, and we read it this morning. Great. And in fact, I was kind of reading up on it. If any gun law was actually uh, put through uh, from the federal government, you as a sheriff do not have to enforce it or follow it. Is that true? Well, if, if it actually goes through the process, the legislative process, there still may be c constitutional questions and concerns that will be addressed all the way up to the Supreme Court. But clearly, this president, Obama, Eric Holder, all of these people who believe that they just can sign an executive order without the legislative process and has the same effect as, as law is ridiculous. And I, as a constitutionally elected sh sheriff, shall not only not enforce it, shall fight this president and uh, they're trampling on the Constitution because this is where we're elected officials, we're trustees of the public trust. This is a republic. Mm -hmm. And that our Constitution is a sacred document that anybody who's worn the uniform of our country knows you swear an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Stronger than any man in, in, or any elected office or any branch of the government. And this is what's being assaulted right now. And so at a time when everybody thinks that, oh, it's the guns or it's the, it's the semi-automatic weapons or the size and capacity of magazines, well, there are already 20,000 laws and regulations today in America. Mm -hmm. And how has that worked? The people who follow the laws are us, law-abiding citizens. Criminals get their names because they break the law. And nearly every one of these cases, including Loeffner, you have mentally ill people who are committing these acts. Why are we not talking and bringing the focus to identifying mentally ill people and suspend their rights? And, and I said to the president, this is a comparison that we all understand is impaired driving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many multiple times more people are killed today in America by impaired driving than any amount of people any year from weapons. And so does the president want to take cars away from people? Mm -hmm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Your letter says uh, the most important office in our republic is that of a private citizen. You are not a dictator. You are not a king. Uh, you, can, you can't act unilaterally. You cannot act you know, and, and ignore a legislative process of lawmaking. Um, you are not the only sheriff in the United States that's Correct. doing this. There's many, many sheriffs. I looked up in uh, New Mexico, so 30 out of 33 county sheriffs, I think, right. uh, are on board with you. Uh, sheriffs in Texas, California, mm -hmm. uh, around the nation. So this is a serious problem. One other thing I wanted to mention, too, is uh, Vice President Joe Biden going to Virginia today to talk about what they're doing on stricter gun laws. But nowhere was it mentioned that he's going there to talk about mental health facilities I know. and caring of the mental health. And that's something that people are overlooking. I read that there are over 70,000 right. people in this country that were deemed they're mentally ill, that can be harmful to themselves or other people, and they have been deinstitutionalized and put out into society. That's what we've done from the time that I was a young man, and we saw that all across America. They are put back out in society. And look at what we in law enforcement can do. If we go 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and there's somebody who's mentally ill, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what are we going to do? Yeah. Right. Seriously. And, th and this is where oftentimes we can refer them to get an assessment. The process is broken. And that's what we have to focus on. And, and, and here, we, the, the, instead, the focus is put on infringing, just this wide-sweeping approach to infringe upon constitutional rights and liberties. Mm -hmm. It's not going to... It's not going to change the circumstances, and we have to be realistic about what actually is going to change to improve the situation. What do you hope by sending this letter from your office, as well as all these other sheriffs across uh, the country, flooding his office, the president's office, with these letters? What do you hope that you're going to get out of that? I mean, do you think that 
he will actually consider this and look at this and read this and hope to look further into mental illness as being a culprit to some of these problems we've recently seen. You know, and the irony here is that 2,000 high-powered weapons were facilitated into the hands of the most violent mm -hmm. criminals in North America, the cartels, by who? This administration. And the audacity, he keeps saying about audacity, uh, of hope and everything, the audacity of this president to do this, never to alert one of the sheriffs of, of Arizona. This is outrageous, what's going on. What do I hope? I sent this early last week. Did the president read it? I hope he has, or his staff has. What it's going to do, you and every person watching is the most powerful person in our land. That of a private citizen in a republic is sacred. And that elected officials need to understand that we serve at the pleasure, at the will of the people. And that that's what's so beautiful about our republic, is that the power is in the people. What's going to happen is that we must stop this president from acting unilaterally and thinking that he can abridge the mm -hmm. legislative process and somehow get his agenda to become law. He is not a king. He is not a dictator. This is a republic. And he is a trustee of the, the power of the people, which comes in the form of the Constitution. And, and following up on something that Andrea asked, uh, almost out of time, but you said you're also going to push for legislation which would make it a crime for a federal law enforcement officer yes. to infringe upon constitutional rights of the American people. Yes. So the last I checked in Pinell County, we arrest people for crimes. Mm -hmm. So what I'm proposing is, is here in Arizona, like other states have already uh, enacted measures that it, it makes it a crime for a member of ATF or any federal agent to carry out these executive orders of the president in our state. Mm -hmm. And that what would happen is we would arrest those people. Mm -hmm. That this is serious stuff. Mm -hmm. And th that this, all Americans have to be gravely alarmed at the powers, the increasing powers of our federal mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. Sheriff Paul W., right. thank you so much thank for joining you. us this morning. We sure appreciate it. Thanks thank for you, having me. Thank you. Thank you.